Welcome into this weekend's MLS betting show. We have one more round of MLS action before the League's Cup gets underway next week. So let's try to go out on a winning note here with this weekend's MLS predictions for Week 28 to see the full slate of 14 games on Saturday. Before we get into these picks, if you want to take advantage of some great new customer promotions, risk-free bets, deposit match bonuses of up to $1,000 or even $1,500, Check out my link down in the comments, signupexpert.com slash shred the spread. You can see a list of all the top promotions for new customers in your area from all the top sports books in the region. Now, let's get started with an all-Canadian matchup here. It's Montreal and Toronto. Toronto routed Montreal 5-1 to one back in May, but Montreal won 3-2, to 2-0 two, two and 2-1 to one last year. Only one time in seven, and twice in 12 meetings. Have there not been at least two or more goals scored between these teams? TFC snapped a run of 10 games of winless, beating Philly last weekend, but they were right back into the L column on Wednesday, losing 3-1 in Miami. That probably was to be expected. It's still just the ninth time in 10 games. It's also the ninth time in 10 games they've given up multiple goals. Toronto has, though, at least scored a goal in 8 of 10. Montreal fell behind 1-0 in midweek play. Drew level 1-1, led in an own goal to fall behind 2-1, and then tied it minutes later in the 81st minute. In a PK to draw the Red Bulls 2-2 two to two on Wednesday. Both of those Montreal goals came from Joseph Martinez. Montreal only has three wins in 11 games, but they also have only two losses in 11 games as they're 3-6-2, so they've been drawing a whole bunch of late. They've scored in 6 of 7, but they've conceded in 6 of 7, so naturally there's been a lot of both teams to score in their games. TFC have also seen a lot of both teams to score bets. This game could play out similarly. Let's go both teams to score in this Canadian rivalry. And this will just be a two-leg parlay. We'll go to Inter-Miami and Chicago. Messi sat out injured. Busquets was suspended on Wednesday, but it didn't matter. Diego Gomez scored in the opening goal. Federico Redondo added a brace to pace Miami to a 3-0 lead over TFC. Luis Suarez came in late in the game for half an hour when things were well out of reach. Toronto pulled one back late in the 79th minute. But it was another Miami win, this time 3-1. The Herons bounced back immediately after their 6-1 loss to Cincy. And they're 12-2-2 in their last 14. They're rolling, but they often do concede goals. Bets on both teams to score. And over 2.5 has gone a perfect 9-0 of late. The Fire went to Cincy on Wednesday. They came away 1-0 winners. That makes them 4-3-3 three three in their last 10. But it's just their second road win in 12. The Cincinnati to note, were without Luciano Acosta and certainly could have ended at least nil-nil until FCC defender Kip Keller headed the ball backwards. He was the last man back, tried to head the ball, headed it backwards, gifted the fire a breakaway, which ended with a Brian Gutierrez goal, which ended up being the only goal in that game. Then Alvis Powell with Cincinnati pressing, trying to draw the game, went and took back-to-back -back yellows probably within about five seconds in the 88th minute, and he got sent off. That did not help matters. Pat Newton then got sent off as well from the sidelines. Since he did themselves no favors there. So Chicago did get the win. It's impressive to get the win on the road. But certainly Cincinnati kind of unraveled in this game. The Fire have won the last three meetings between Miami. 4-1, 3-2, and 3-1. Now only that last game in October, a 4-1 win, came versus this version of Miami. That streak ends here, as far as I'm concerned, in Miami. With Miami winning, let's go Miami to win. Montreal and Toronto, both teams to score, coming in at plus 161. Parlay number two, three games, Atlanta and Columbus. Atlanta drew 2-2 on Wednesday with New York City FC. They're now winless in five in all competitions. They've allowed multiple goals in four of five and at least one goal in seven straight and one goal in 11 of their last 12. Is there any reason to see them beating or keeping a clean sheet against the crew? I think that's going to be unlikely. It was close in February with Columbus winning just one to nothing, but the crew have scored in 16 straight games versus Atlanta. This season, the crew have just three losses in all competitions across their last 22 matches. They've scored in eight straight games in 13 of 14, and in their current six-game undefeated streak, they've outscored opponents 21-3. to Likely you can find some great value on a road Columbus win, or simply ask Columbus just to get one goal, at least. Next up, Austin and Charlotte. Austin have just two wins in, t in 10. They have just, just lost away to their rivals, Dallas 3-1 in the Copa Tejas rivalry on Wednesday. They also saw defender Julio, Julio Julio Cascante and attacker Sebastian Dreyusi pick up suspensions that will see them miss out in this game. So that's a big piece missing on defense and offense. In their last 10 games, Austin has scored more than one goal just one time. Meanwhile, they've conceded a goal in nine of 10 games. I don't see them scoring more than one here against one of the top defensive teams in the league in Charlotte. I also struggle to see them keep a clean sheet. They don't do that very often either. So that could mean a Charlotte win. It could at least mean Charlotte not losing. Austin is generally at least better at home. 
usually. The Crown have just three losses in 14. They're coming off a 1-1 draw with Columbus and a 3-1 win over Cincinnati. Both of those on the road. They'll be on the road again here. Austin, though, a big step down from those two teams. Let's bet on Charlotte at least not losing this game. Charlotte, double chance. And just that's probably good enough by itself if you wanted to stick it, just keep it like that. But just to get this a little closer to even money, one simple selection I'm going to toss in between Minnesota and San Jose. San Jose is easily holding down the distinction of wooden spoon leaders right now. They lost one nothing at home in Houston on Wednesday. They have just one win in 13 games across all competitions. Now in 26 games in all competitions, the Quakes have just two clean sheets. One of those came in the U.S. Open Cup and only one has come in MLS. You can't say, though, much positive about Minnesota either, though, right now. They're 0-2-7. That's winless in their last nine. They've been outscored 21-11 to in that time. Certainly, this could be a good both teams to score bet. I have been trying to do that with San Jose games a lot lately, and they've just not been panning out, though. The both teams to score over 2.5 is 4-1, and one, and the both teams to score is 5-0 and oh in recent games. The Loons also haven't failed to score, though, at home against San Jose since 2017. I'm just going to use this to simply bump up my parlay closer to minus the um, the even money here and just ask Minnesota to score at least one goal. But if I'm picking a winner, I would have to bet on Minnesota, probably snapping their winless streak and getting the win. But this parlay, for the sake of this parlay, will go Minnesota to score, Columbus to score, and Charlotte double chance. In my opinion, as long as Charlotte doesn't lose the game, the other two options should be relatively easy to hit. So let's go th do that for minus 114. Parlay number three, three more games, Philadelphia and Nashville. This has not been a high-scoring matchup in recent years. Other scores between them have been 1-0, 1-0, 1-1, 1-1, 2-0, and 0-0. But in April of this year, Philly won 2-1 in Nashville. Now, Nashville got thumped 3-0 at home to Orlando on Wednesday. Now, they did almost score a goal in the dying seconds of that game, but it was called offside. Very questionable. Could have possibly been a goal. They've now lost 3-0, 2-1, 4-1, 2-0, and 2-1 in five straight losses. The Union, they had been winless in 10 games, and they had just one win in 17 games. Smacked around the Revs in midweek, getting a hat trick from Ty Baribo and goals from Jacob Glesnes and Quinn Sullivan as they routed New England 5-1. to one. Quinn's younger brother, Kevin Sullivan, also debuted, becoming the youngest player to ever play in MLS at 14 years and 293 days old. Union games have seen two or more goals in eight of their last nine. They've seen three or more goals in seven of their last nine. I would lean to Philadelphia winning this game if I was picking a winner, especially with Nashville missing Walker Zimmerman out for Olympic duty. But that Wednesday win for Philly was their first home win since going all the way back to March. So I'm just going to ask for there to be over 1.5 goals in this game, so two or more goals in this game some way, somehow. Leg number two, similar approach with SKC and St. Louis City. Both teams took the L on Wednesday for St. Louis, 2-0 away to Seattle. For SKC, their game played out like basically every SKC does game does this season. They fell behind, they tied it, they got scored on again, and they lost. Therefore, anyone with all their chips on the both team to score or both team to score an over 2.5 cash yet again, I will keep running down these stats for SKC games that just keep increasing each week. They scored in 22 of 25, conceded in 23 of 25. Both teams to score bets for SKC this season have gone 21 and 4 if you're just counting MLS games. But the both team to score an over 2.5 has also gone 12 and 2 and 19 and 3 in recent SKC games. SKC, though, has given up multiple goals in 11 of 14 and in 15 of 19 recent MLS games as well. Now, this newly formed rivalry in MLS has seen plenty of goals. Last year, the scores were 4-0 St. Louis, 2-1 SKC, 4-1 St. Louis, 4-1 SKC, and 2-1 SKC. The high-scoring nature continued this year as well with a 3-3 draw earlier this season. Home teams are 5-0-1, the over 2.5 is 6-0, and, oh, and both teams scoring over 2.5 is 5-1. It's hard to trust either of these teams, though, to win here. We have a 12th place team playing a 13th place team. The edge for me, slightly, will have to be with the home team. We just said home teams usually win. They've, um, uh, they've won four or six games, SKC have, in all competitions, while St. Louis also has just one win in 13. And it's versus the only team that's blown them in the standings. That one win came against San Jose. If I'm picking a winner, I'm going SKC. I'd love to bet goals. The St. Louis offense has looked very poor of late. I am just going to ask for over 1.5 goals in this game. I don't see it necessarily being low scoring. Let's just ask for two goals. Most of the value in this uh, parlay will come in this next game. Vancouver and Houston. In the last two years, these teams have piled up the goals when they play each other. And the home teams have also dominated. Both won at home last year. Vancouver 6-2. Houston 4-1. And both won 2-1 at home in 2022. Home teams are an undefeated 7-3-0 in the last 10 and there's only been one road win between these games in the last 23 all-time meetings. So that's not good, not, not a good trend. 
if you think Houston's going to go into Vancouver and get the win this week. Now, you could certainly make the case for the trend of goals to continue here. Caps are hot. They won 2-1 to one on Wednesday over SKC, and they're 5-1-0, and oh, undefeated in their last six in all competitions in that time. They've scored 15 goals in those six games. Brian White is scorching hot with seven goals in his last five MLS games as well. He was inches away from scoring against SKC, but it did go down as an own goal. However, defensively, the Caps have conceded a goal in 13 straight games as well in MLS. The Dynamo got a late winner from Daniel Sturris in San Jose. San Jose is the worst team in the league right now. That game was on Wednesday. They got the win, 1-0. They're 4-4-1 in nine. It's just one loss in nine games, and they've scored 18 goals in that time. But the both teams' score has gone 9-2 in their past 11. So for me, I'm going to bet on goals coming from both teams here. Let's go both teams' to score between Vancouver and Houston, over 1.5 with SKC and St. Louis, over 1.5 between Philly and Nashville, coming in at plus 114 odds. Let's do one more parlay. We're getting late into the night here. And it's LA Galaxy and the Portland Timbers. The Timbers will come into this game fresh. They were the one team that was sat out that sat out midweek on Wednesday, and they're one of the league's hottest teams right now. They routed another hot team in RSL on the weekend last week, three to nothing. And they're eight two and two in their last twelve. They scored twenty seven goals in those twelve games, and at least one goal in twelve of thirteen, and at least one goal in eighteen of nineteen. Each of Rodriguez, Mora, and Evander all have eleven goals, so it's hard to not back the Timbers getting on the score sheet here but it's hard to not back the Galaxy to get on the score sheet either. They're tied for third in the league in scoring. They have the second highest XG and the second most shots on target. They bounce back from a 2-0 loss in Dallas and beat the Rapids 3-2 without the services of Dejan Jovalich on Wednesday. But Fagundes, Fagundes, Paintsell, and Puge all found the score sheet and Peck added two assists themselves. The Galaxy have scored in 10 of 11 recent games right now. now there were two completely different results between these teams last year. There was a 0-0 draw and a 3-3 draw. We look further back. The trend has been goals. Both teams have scored five and one and nine and two in their recent games. This has the potential to me to be the most exciting game of the night, and I'm going to bet it that way. Going both teams to score in over 2.5. Now, even that, it comes in at minus 200 odds over at bet 365. So that's not quite good enough for me. So let's just add one more simple looking option just to slightly bring that price down a little bit better here. We'll go both teams to score over 2.5 with LA and Portland, and then we'll go into the Colorado Real Salt Lake game. It's the rivalry. This rivalry looks like one of, could be one of the best games this weekend as well. RSL's third in the West, and the Rapids are fifth. The Rocky Mountain Cup was a wild one back in May when these teams last played. It was a 5-3 RSL win. RSL's been owning this rivalry of late as well, being 6-2-1 in the past nine. So certainly at home, Colorado should be coming out strong, looking to get a win here at home and reverse some of those trends. Neither team has won, though, in their last two games. RSL drew with LAFC on Wednesday, and they lost 3-0 to Portland last weekend. They're again without Chicho Arango through suspension. Colorado lost to the LA Galaxy 3-2 on Wednesday. They drew the Red Bulls 1-1 on the weekend as well. Now, they're also without the services of their best player in Georgi Mihaljevic, who's away for the Olympics. Now, these teams have piled up the goals this season, with RSL being second in goals four and Colorado being tied in third. In XG, Colorado is third, and RSL is fourth. Now, those stats... Obviously, we'll take a little bit of a hit here this weekend with those key players out of the lineup. In that eight-goal thriller in May, Arango had two goals and one assist, and Mihaljevic had one goal. But that's still plenty of goals that came from players not named those two guys. Both teams' score bets have gone 4-0, 5-1 in recent Rapids games. Both teams' score bets have gone 4-2 in recent RSL games. It could very well be that outcome here again. I would not be against the both teams' to score bet. We are, though, missing some, some key players here. I am just going to simply ask for Colorado at home to get on the score sheet in this parlay to bring down the price from that last selection with LA and Portland. We'll go Colorado just to score at least one goal paired with LA and Portland. Both teams score over 2.5 for not a big price, but minus 141. I want to make sure, I want to hope that Colorado gets that goal and it can just sit back and enjoy cheer for some goals in this late game Saturday night. So those will be my four parlays covering those games for this weekend. We've touched on almost all the games here. Now let me know, though, what your best bets are for MLS this weekend. Down there in the comments, your best straight bets, upsets, parlays, or props. Give the video a like. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more soccer picks. And stay tuned for the League's Cup and the Olympics coming up soon.